Thank you everyone coming out uh, today. Um, I wanted to start this off because sometimes as you go through a long season and one that obviously ended up fantastically for us, um, sometimes it's, um, it's hard to see the forest through the trees and in this case, you know, in terms of Chris. So I just wanted to hit a couple things because uh, as I said, sometimes you don't understand or realize uh, in three years exactly what Chris Wright has meant to our program. Um, since he's been here in terms of his impact on our program since becoming a flyer, for three straight years we've been ranked in the top 25. Um, with him in the lineup, we're 44 and 2 at home, 66 and 21 overall. We've had three straight postseason bids. Um, with him healthy playing, we're 7 and 2 in postseason games. Um, first win in the NCAA tournament in 20 years, and obviously this year, an NIT championship uh, with five straight wins, four of them, four of them over BCS schools. Uh, in addition to that, just the increased national exposure uh, that this program has received with him being here, and also um, an impact that I see every day, uh, his influence on our recruiting and how our recruiting has taken a huge jump because of him coming here and him uh, being very uh, outwardly, uh, outward spoken in terms of saying, hey, this is a great place, this is a great place to be at, legitimizing a lot of the stuff that we try to sell in the recruiting. Um, so his impact on this program has been incredible. Uh, what he's done as an individual is equally impressive. Uh, without ever playing a game in the Atlantic 10, as a freshman, he was named to the all-freshman team. I'm not sure that's ever happened before. Um, two-time all-league performer, two-time team MVP, over a thousand points. Ernestine has the ball that it took Chris four weeks to pick up from me um, because that's the type of person he is. That's an individual accolade, which is great, but it's so far down the list of things that is important to him. It's been in my locker for four weeks now. So. Uh, uh, and what he's done for this program off the court. He is on target to graduate next May um, in four years uh, and has done a great job in the classroom. This is his hometown. He's constantly giving back his time to this hometown that he loves so very much and, and obviously not just in time but in service as well. Uh, visiting hospitals, schools, churches, you name it. Um, he's been a, you know, he's a tremendous uh, positive for this community. And in the three years that he's been here, I've, got, I've watched him mature as a young man, grow as a, as a leader, and obviously, you know, to, to, to be, um, you know, just to put it any other way, he's represented our program in a first class manner and everything that he's done. I think at times, because of the games, because of the competition, because of wins and losses, you lose sight of in three years what this young man has done for this program, both as a basketball player, as a student, and as a person, and what he's meant to this this community. Um, and so now that the season's over, I get an opportunity to stand up here and tell you that, and make sure that uh, everybody understands just how proud we are of him and the things that he has accomplished here. So with that, I'm going to turn it over for uh, turn it over to Chris. Um, and let him um, go over what he needs to go over, and then we'll open it up to any questions afterwards. All right? Go ahead. The reason why I come find the ball is because you got a lot of suits as work real nice. <laughs> I want to take a suit instead of basketball, but I can't fit it. <laughs> now, I'd like to thank you all for coming. Um, I just thank God for you know, the opportunity to be standing here today because you know, without him, would not be possible. You know, the combination of faith. You know, our family is what we have here today. You know, coming in today, you know, there's three things that I really want to focus on with that. You know, earning a degree, you know, ele help elevate, you know, the program, you know, at, at, to a high level, and play against the best competition, you know, on the highest level. You know, I love the city, I love the community, I love the University of Dayton. You know, it's been a lot of great times here, and, you know, my family was able to share those times with me. And, you know, even in the negative times, they were able to support me. And, you know, I know it's added pressure, you know, going to a a program or a university that's close to home, you know, and I know it's happening a lot of, to a lot of players all across the country because I've been through it, 
you know, would support them, you know, would be possible, and you know, my continuous praying every day, you know, that's what helped me, you know, through this process. And, um, you know, with that being said, you know, I, I would like to enter my name in this year and be a draft. And now from this point forward, you know, I will, you know, focus and continue my progress on my degree, toward my degree, and, you know, continue to improve and, you know, continue to be here to encourage the guys, you know, on the team because, you know, that's a big part of me, you know, coming here with those guys. And I will just continue to work hard every day and, you know, be ready to participate, you know, in the, in the trials and, you know, first week of May. Questions from the floor. Not hiring an agent, it's my understanding, Chris. Is that Ryan? You just what? What was the process? Yeah, I'm not even on, you know, securing an agent. You know, I was just uh, basically use the um, the program, utilize, and then use, utilize the program that's you know been set forth, you know, for underclassmen, and you know, just evaluate my draft status, you know, and just go from there. For your draft status is evaluated. What are, you, what are the chances you see yourself staying in the NBA draft and hiring an agent at this point? Before all that, um, at this point, I'm really not sure. You know, um, just this whole year, you know, I've just been really focusing on the season, not necessarily, you know, worried about you know the NBA and stuff like that. You know, now, you know, it's pretty much a goal of mine. BG always told me it's not you no know, matter of, of if; it's just always a matter of when. You know, just right now, I just want to focus on you know this next month. You know, continuing to work towards you know my degree and continue to get in better shape and, you know, be prepared for whatever, you know, they thought me the first week of May. Well, one thing, obviously, is that the NBA has a great system in place for these underclassmen. Um, one thing that we will do, you know, Chris, Chris has, has been really mature and his family has been great during this whole process in terms of, all right, these are the steps that need to be taken. <coughs> have a great day of the year. And everything on a positive note. Take some time to reflect and think and talk, and um, uh, so this decision was, you know, a, has been well thought out, and the process will be a, a, as well as he said. You know, over the next month, his number one goal, the, the main objective that he has, is to continue to do well in the classroom. He has less than three weeks left of school, and he's done a great job. Uh, you know, uh, I just met with Beth on the, before we came over here. And he's on track with every class that he's in, um, and so forth. So that's not going to be an issue. And then obviously to get himself ready, he has one week basically in the beginning of May that, that the NBA is allowed to do workouts and so forth. He'll participate in that. So from this time forward, it's academics, workouts. He'll be working out with our team in all the weight sessions and so forth. And then we'll do a lot of individual work with him to get him ready uh, for those workouts. The NBA has, you know, a, uh, undergraduate draft advisory committee that uh, myself and Chris and the family will constantly monitor and get all the information. So this decision will be based on uh, all the important information and data that we'll, we'll collect together. Um, I couldn't be more proud. This is the right decision to make. And the one thing I wanted to make sure that everybody knows is that if the draft situation is where Chris and his family want it, I'll be the happiest person in the world. And it's, a, it, 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 it's, a, it's why uh, one of the many things that we talked about when we were recruiting him as a high school player, it is my job to make sure that we do everything to put him in a position uh, to be drafted at where he wants to be drafted and to be able to move on and play at the, at the next level. As I told him, it's not a question of if, it's when. And if now is the right time, uh, then, uh, then it's the right move to make. It's the right move to make. He does so not only with my blessing, but I'll kick him in the butt to make sure that he, get, you know, if he has any hesitation, if it's the right time, he should go. I want to make sure everybody understands that. And that's the tricky part too of the postseason. You know, you are playing well, playing for a minute. You know, everything is all good, but when you get back, that work gonna be right there waiting for you. Now it's a lot of legal work, so I just gotta focus on that right now. And it's important, and he's done it. You know, Chris, like all our guys, have done a good job of staying on top of stuff. Um, and then now we move into another phase the next month, and it's tight. It's one month now. The rules have changed on that. Um, but those rules would affect families and, and student athletes that have not, are not well prepared and uh, do not go about things in a, in a very organized fashion, and that's not going to happen with Chris and, and his family.